Welcome back. In this video, we will solve a linear system with four equations, each in six variables. Honestly, this example is on the long side, but you'll see a bit of every situation that can arise. I'd recommend that you give this problem a go on your own before watching the video. If you get stuck, watch the few steps and give it another try. We're asked to solve the following linear system by reducing the augmented matrix to reduced row echelon form. We then need to give both the general solution and three different particular solutions. We know by now that the first thing to do when solving a linear system is to write down its augmented matrix. So let's get started. We start with equation one and we write down the coefficients in the constant. One, three, minus two, zero, two, zero and zero. From the second equation, I have two, six, minus five, minus two, four, minus three, and minus one. From the third equation, I have zero, zero, five, 10, zero, 15, and five. And finally, in the last equation, I have two, six, zero, eight, four, 18, and six. Okay, so we have the augmented matrix. We separate the coefficients from the constants and we start to look at the situation. Luckily, I picked a first equation whose coefficient of x1 was a one, so we know we can use this coefficient straight away to clear below. In particular, I'm gonna to wanna to clear out this two and this two. So I'll use the elementary row operations. Row two uh, minus twice row one is gonna become the new row two and row four minus also twice row one will become the new row four. Okay, so let's do it. The first row will stay exactly the same. I have one, three, minus two, zero, two, zero, zero. Then this row, I do two minus two, which is zero. Six minus six, also zero. Five minus minus four is minus one minus two, four minus four is zero, minus three minus zero is minus three, and finally minus one minus zero is still minus one. The third row stays the same, zero, zero, five, 10, zero, 15, and five. And for the fourth row, I do two minus two, zero, six minus six, also zero, zero minus minus four gives me four, eight minus zero is eight, four minus four is zero, and 18 minus zero, 18, six minus zero, six. Okay, so a couple things to notice. First, we've now dealt with the first column of the matrix. We have a one in the top position, and we have zeros below. The next thing is when I go to find a leading one in the next column, starting with row two, there's no non-zero entries available. Therefore, I have to move on to the third column. Here, I find this minus one, which I know I can make into a one just by scaling the row. So we'll do that. We're going to do uh, row two, multiply it by minus one, becomes the new row two. So here, this first the first row stays the same. One, three, minus two, zero, two, zero, zero. The second row I have to scale, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 3, and 1. And the rest of the matrix stays the same, 0, 0, 5, 10, 0, 15, 5, and 0, 0, 4, 8, 0, 18, and 6. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this leading one to clear below using the elementary row operations. I forgot to tell that. Using the elementary row operations, I'll do row three minus five row two will be the new row three. And to clear out the four, I do row four minus four row two will be the new row four. Okay, so what does this give me? Well, again, I know that the first two rows will stay the same this time. One three minus two, zero, two, zero, zero, and then zero, zero, one, two, zero, three, one. 
Now we have to pay attention for the third row. Zero, zero, five minus five is zero. 10 minus 10, also zero. Zero minus zero, still zero. 15 minus 15, zero. And five minus five, zero. Oh, so this is kind of interesting. We actually have a row of zeros. Okay, let's see what happens with row four. In row four, again, the first two entries are zero. I need to do four minus four, that's zero. Eight minus eight, still zero. Zero minus zero, zero. 18 minus 12 gives me six. And six minus four gives me two. So remember, the first condition of row echelon form or reduced row echelon form is that any rows of zeros are at the bottom of the matrix. So I need to put this, what's currently the third row to the bottom. So I'll do a row swap. I'll do row three swaps with row four. The first two rows stay the same. One, three, minus two, zero, two, zero, 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 one, two, zero, three, one. And now I swap. Zero, 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 one more zero, six and two. And finally, zero, 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 zero. Good. Now, I notice that uh, as I look, I have a leading one in the first row, a leading one in the second row, and when I go find the leading entry in the third row, it's a six. So I need to scale the third row to make it a one. So we'll do one sixth of row three becomes the new row three. So what do I have? Uh, it's only row three that changes. So I have one, three, minus two, zero, two, zero, 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 one, two, zero, three, one, zero, 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 six divided by six, one, that's how I pick the six, one sixth, and two divided by six gives me one third. Finally, I still have the last row of zeros. Now that I have a leading one in this position, uh, we see that we're in echelon form, in row echelon form. So if we want to go all the way to reduced row echelon form, I need to start in the leftmost column, the rightmost column here, and start clearing above. So let's do that. There's only, uh, above that one is only the three, so I only have to modify row two. So I'll take row two. Uh, minus three times row three is going to be the new row two. And I have first row again stays the same. One, three, minus two, zero, two, zero, zero. The beginning of the second row stays the same. Zero, zero, one, two, zero. Now this term here will become a zero because I cleared it. And I'm also going to do one minus three times one third, which will also give me a zero. Finally, the last two, the last two rows say the same. Okay, moving on. I need to use this leading entry here to clear above. So I need to use the elementary row operation, row one plus twice row two is gonna be the new row one. Here I have one, three, zero. Now let's see, I have to multiply by two, so I'll get a four in this position. The two stays, the zero stays, and the zero stays. Everything else is the same. 
zero, zero, one, two, zero, 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 one, one third, and the final row of zeros at the bottom. Shoo, I think we did it. So let's just make sure. We have uh, in the first row, we have a leading one. In the second row, we have a leading one. In the third row, we have a leading one. In the fourth row, there's no leading entries. It's all zeros. We can see that the system is consistent because we don't have the configuration that zero is equal to not zero. Uh, we have, if we look below any of the leading ones, we have all zeros. If we look above any of the leading ones, we have all zeros. So we're definitely in reduced row echelon form at this point. So we're ready to start looking for the solution. So like usual, I'm gonna remind myself which columns correspond to which variables. The first column corresponds to x1, the second column to x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6. I can see that columns that correspond to x2, x4, and x5 do not have leading entries. What this means is I'm going to get three different free variables. So I'm going to set x2 equal to say s. I'll set x4 equal to t and x5 let's say L. So here S, T, and L are all going to be parameters varying over all real numbers. I can also look at what happens with the leading variables. From the third row of the reduced, of, of the reduced matrix, I can see that X6 is always going to be equal to one half. From the second row, I can see that x3 plus twice x4 is equal to zero. And from the first row of the matrix, I can see that x1 plus three times x2 plus four times x4 plus two times x5 is going to equal 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take these equations and I'm going to organize. So the first thing is that I can always say that x1 is going to be equal to minus 3x2 minus 4x4 minus 2x5, but then we remember that each of these variables is actually designated by a parameter now, so I'll rewrite this as minus 3s minus 4t minus 2l. For x2, we know that that is the parameter s. x3 is equal to minus 2x4, which is the same thing as minus 2t x4 is equal to t, x5 is equal to l, and finally x6, remember we have to look up, was actually always equal to, I wrote one half there, I knew I was going to make a typo at some point, how far up is it? Okay, so I had a mistake here, so let's fix it. This one half here should actually be a one third. So let's fix that. So the one half is supposed to be one third. Which means I also need to fix that here. Okay, and so now I have to remember that the x6 is actually equal to one third. 
Okay, finally, to write down the general solution, we should just write things in terms of parameters. So we should take one more pass and we should write down x1 is equal to minus 3s minus 4t minus 2l. x2 is equal to s. x3 is equal to minus 2t. x4 is equal to t. x5 is equal to l and x6 is equal to one third. Don't forget, we have to specify the s, t, and l are real number parameters, and we're done. We have a parametric solution to the linear system. We're not quite done with the problem because we were still asked to write down three different particular solutions. So let's try to write down some particular solutions. Oh, and we'll label this as the general solution. For a particular solution, we need to pick values for s, t, and l. The easiest choice, of course, is to take s equal to t equal to, z, uh, equal to l equal to 0, which would give the solution 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, and 1 third. Another good choice for S, T, and L would be to just take one of the variables like L to be equal to 1. So we'll still take S equal T equals 0, but this time we'll take L to be equal to 1. So let's do that. When we do that, I have oops, L equal to 1, I said. When I do that, we get that the x1 term is going to be 0 minus 2, which is minus 2. Then we have 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1 third. OK, for the final one, let's take s equal to 7, t equal to pi, l equal to e. No, let's not. I'll let you find a third particular solution yourselves.